All right. Now, we let him draw three continuous traps. We let him activate them. We'll switch uh, Barrel Dragon to defense mode after he's drawn, like, his third continuous trap. And then I'll just put Blast Sphere face down. And I highly doubt he's going to attack Blast Sphere with anything that is less than 1,200 attack. The only thing he has in his deck that is less than 1,200 is probably, like, Giant Germ. And because I think he has that. Of course, Exile, of course. I hate this card. This card is hot, hot garbage. I hate it. Is probably, uh... Spirit Reaper and Giant Germ, and he won't attack the face down with those, I don't think. He'll probably attack it with Uriah, if anything, and then he loses. Unless he has Breaker. If he summons Breaker, we have to kill Breaker. I also don't want to let him have any other monsters if I can help it, so I'm going to destroy whatever that face down is. Unfortunately, I can't summon Jinzo, because I think if I summon Jinzo, it stops him from being able to summon the thing. Mirror Force, we can also, um... I actually kind of want to keep Frontline Base here, but I got to discard it. We can also use, uh, Mirror Force. We can try and fake, unless the AI cheats, which I don't even know if the game is designed to do that. We can, uh... I love Sengen with Uriah, because it lets you put Uriah in your hand. It's so funny. Yep, there it is. But, uh... We could actually, uh, trick him with just a bunch of face downs. What are you... Uriah's gonna have, like, 8,000 attack when it comes out. Gotta be careful about that. But yeah, we, we can trick him with, uh, a bunch of face downs and get him with Mirror Force as well is a possibility. Two Blast Spheres makes me feel even better about this situation. <sighs> Marshmallow. I really don't like losing any life points right now, even if it's just a thousand. Because Uriah is going to come out with so much. I would really like to draw... Okay, Breaker sucks. We, we got to kill Breaker. Which I might be able to make happen with Roulette Barrel's effect now, which will be good. We can't let him have any extra... I think Breaker is restricted, so we should only have the one. I think it actually got unrestricted in later games. I can also set up the uh, Command Knight lock, which, again, just makes me feel even better. We got Breaker out of here. This is going great. It might give me level 3 here. It did not. Even if it gave me level 3, I wouldn't have destroyed Marshmallow. Breaker is actually way more of a threat. I will go ahead and summon you. And I'm probably going to put these guys in defense mode here in a second. But I'm just waiting to see if he summons another monster. <laughs> of course. Okay, Exiled Force should be semi-restricted. I feel like that stupid card should be restricted. I hate it. But he shouldn't have any more Exiled Force, at least. We're gonna save that. Mirror Force is our backup if Blast Spear fails for some reason. So we want to have as many face-down cards. Oh, thank you. Deserved. We're going to want to have as many face downs as possible when he summons Uriah to hopefully uh, catch it with Mirror Force. Okay, he can summon Uriah on his turn now. He's got Stronghold. I don't know what that other face down is. It might be Wall of Revealing Light, which is why he isn't activating it because he doesn't want to lose his life points. I'm going to put all of these face down. I am not going to put Blast Spear face down, because if he draws and summons Breaker and then attacks with Breaker, he'll lose before he can summon Uriah, and then that means I lose. I think that face down is uh, it's either not a continuous trap. Pick the third Uriah, I dare you. What a loser. It's either not a continuous trap, it's something else, or it's Wall of Revealing Light, and he doesn't want to pay a thousand life points. Magic Cylinder makes it even more likely for us to get the dub. I, we just need him to summon Uriah and we win. Actually, now that we have Mirror Force and Magic Cylinder, we like guaranteed win when he summons Uriah. Because even if he destroys one or the other, it means we get to use the other one. Needle Wall actually really sucks. But it's fine. He's going to get one use of Needle Wall and then he's going to uh, lose it to summon Uriah. Hopefully he doesn't hit our command knights here. 
what, a two and a four hits Command Knight. Don't get a two or a four. All right, it's going to destroy our Command Knight. That really sucks. Super unlucky. All right, summon out Uriah. Destroy Mirror Force and then let me Magic Cylinder you. Honestly. <sighs> that sucks. Why? What a dumb play. I'm not going to Mirror Force here. Because he just loses to Blasphere instead. I could have Mirror Forced, but then I don't know how I would have won. I would have summoned Jinzo to stop all of his traps so he couldn't summon another Uriah. Would have been my first move. But, uh... I don't know how I would have gotten past Marshmallow. I would have had to have gotten Y Dragon Head. I am going to summon Jinzo here because there's no reason not to. Oh, JLB, welcome to stream. I just saw you there. Thanks for coming to stream. Hope you're having a good time. I didn't realize that this is what would happen to Stronghold when you summon Jinzo. That's really funny. This dude has 8,000 attack. All right, we beat Uriah. Raviel is the easiest one to beat. So, because it's really easy to stop Kagamaru from summoning Raviel, and Raviel's effects suck. Raviel is the worst Sacred Beast by far. It's not even close. Ooh, baby. We're not going to get to level 19 in today's stream. There's no shot. We got, like, a little over half an hour. We have to beat one more Kagamaru deck and then go through a lot of dialogue. But we're going to get really close. Like, we'll get to level 19 in the first hour next stream for sure. Did he do it? The power of the sacred beast is incredible. I'm still rejuvenating. His nose doesn't look as stupid now. Yes! He became younger again. How do you like me now? I am unstoppable. That's what you said last time. All right. All we got to do is beat Raviel. That's all it takes. Save up. Chaos, what's your favorite game, Oast? Probably Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Definitive edition. So much beautiful music in that game that is just good to listen to, but also has so much meaning and fits the tone of so many areas. It hits so many different things. It's got, like, upbeat, like fast-paced action music. It's got really good sad slow music. It has really good environment music. Just Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. It's it's got it all. It's got it's got a perfect range in its oast of like all different kinds of of tracks to just hit every moment in that game. So far it's been child's play. It's time I became serious. I still have the most powerful Sacred Beast card in my hand. I don't know why he says Raviel is the strongest one when it's definitely the worst of the three. I will finish this! Like, is there even any debate? Shimmering Sovereign. Is there, like, any debate that Raviel is not the worst Sacred Beast? Like, Haman and Uriah are both way easier to summon. And they're also just, like, their effects are way better than Raviel's. Yo, this final boss music, though? Jinzo would be really good here. Do I immediately dump Jinzo to Call of the Haunted him, or do I save Call of the Haunted for a double attempt? I think I dump him and go immediately for Call of the Haunted, then I dump this, because I want to keep the double Command Knight strat, and then I can use Frontline Base to summon out Z and Y at the same time and fuse them. So... To summon Raviel, he has to sacrifice three Fiend-type monsters. Fiend Sanctuary is a Fiend-type. So at some point, we have to let him get three out. I'm going to be really mad if he summons Raviel turn one, because that's going to make this, like, impossible to do. Okay, he didn't immediately summon it out. Thank goodness. But all he has to do is draw Raviel, because he special summons Raviel. So he has these two tokens. He plays a Fiend, and then he special summons Raviel. I'm going to go ahead and call the haunted out Jinzo. Really would feel a lot better if I could draw, like, Magic Cylinder. He's going to take 2,000 damage on his turn, though, which is really nice. Also, unless he gets Exiled Force or something, he can't attack my Command Knights now, so... 
That makes me feel safer. We want to get as much damage on his life points as we can. He's going to take another 2,000 on his turn. We just want to make sure he's really low so that when he does summon out Raviel, he'll be like one hit from death. Really weird of him to double up the Metal Fiend token without having Raviel in his hand. Hmm? Did you draw Raviel? We could see Raviel right here. I don't know what he's doing. It doesn't matter if he destroys Call of the Haunted here. Is the AI dumb? Does the AI not realize? Okay, cool. The AI doesn't realize that Jinzo negates that. I like, I don't want a heavy storm because I want to attack this thing for damage. So now he's just gonna have to destroy his, uh, his fiend tokens on his turn. All right, and now we have to play a really long and boring waiting game, but that's fine because I need to draw Magic Cylinder or Mirror Force. I just need to draw something that lets me uh, deal damage to him. I don't know why he used these Metal Fiend tokens. It's because his AI is stupid. I'm gonna Heavy Storm, whatever that is. I can actually just make Jinzo, ooh, Torrential Tribute and Sakuretsu Armor. Really glad to see those, Gal. I can actually just try and make Jinzo stronger than Raviel. It just takes like four cards in my spell and trap card zone? Yeah, two more. I'm gonna go ahead and fusion these. And I was about to destroy that face down, but I actually don't want to. Well, actually, yes, I do. I was gonna say I need him to get three fiends so that he can summon Raviel when the time comes, but I would rather super slow play it. It's insane how I would have absolutely destroyed him in this fight if I didn't have to wait for Raviel to come out. That's fun. Put this face down to buff Jinzo. All right, now we just have to wait for him to get two more fiends in Raviel. Hopefully that's Raviel in his hand because he didn't play it or put it face down. Uh, don't play Blast Sphere. He'll get himself killed. He will absolutely make himself lose by attacking it. That's a little spooky, but I mean, it can't be a trap. It could be a trap, but if it is a trap, it does nothing. Blast Sphere also is another way for us to win the game. Raviel or any monster attacks Blast Sphere when it's face down, and we're good. He got rid of Gilgarth, but he got sealed gold copper. That's good. So he'll have Raviel in his hand. We just need him to get two more fiends. And we got Mirror Force. Okay, so we super win. Honestly, this is uh, this went pretty good. Unless something insane happens here, which I doubt, we're gonna win this. And then uh, we lost one Uriah duel where he had literally a perfect top deck, like in every way imaginable. I'm not playing Reflect Bounder, by the way, because he might attack it because he's dumb. We won the Haman deck first, first attempt. Like this actually went insanely well, that we only lost one Uriah duel. And not only did was it just that one duel we lost, but it was like insanely lucky for Kagamaru to have even beaten us in the first place. I feel pretty good about that. I'm not gonna Nobleman of Cross out for obvious reasons. I need him to get three fiend type monsters to summon Raviel and he is just not drawing it. United We Stand is a good backup for being able to beat Raviel. We'll put that on YZ Tank. That's fine. Making him use Mystical Space Typhoon on this means that he can't use it on Mage Power. Put you in defense position, because why not? I like how the little dragon head, like, leans downward. Ah, oh, Shield Crash, that's why not. It doesn't matter. There's, there's basically no way he can... Yeah, he summons it here. We win. This is incredibly over. Is he gonna summon? I was about to say he's gonna summon him in defense mode. What a loser. Raviel looks really cool, by the way. 
Like, I love the look of all the sacred beasts. They look awesome. Oh no, DD Warrior Lady. But, uh... In a third Command Knight, that's just insult to injury. But he is definitely, like, the weakest of them all. Oh no, a Phantasm token. I forgot that you did that. Can't activate any traps. There goes Raviel. This is, is this the only one we actually destroyed? We destroyed Uriah because Blast Spear blew him up. This is the only one we destroyed in combat, though. Like, in the battle phase. There you have it. We have defeated Kagamaru. Honestly, didn't think it would take this late in the stream. I thought we would have done this like an hour ago. There was more stuff to do leading up to it than I thought. Another 213 experience. We got about 1,300 to go to a level up. We can probably, I mean, we can definitely get like three or four more duels in stream. So we'll have less than 1,000 to go for a level up before next stream. There are only like three more difficult duels left in the game, I think. I'm pretty sure the first Aster Phoenix duel is really easy. The difficult duels, oh, four. We have a duel with Zane, a duel with Dark Zane, and then we have a duel with uh, Jaden, and then we have a duel with Aster where he uses Destiny heroes. I don't even think there aren't that many good Destiny heroes in this game. So this, this was probably the hardest duel in the game that we just finished, these three. The Uriah duel specifically was probably the hardest duel in the game. Ah! How was that, chat? Did that, did that hurt anyone's ears? I apologize. Impossible! How could my sacred beasts be destroyed? You did it, Solo! How did you get back in the tube? This is my true form. I just wanted to be young again. Seeing you kids with such vigor. I wanted to go back to my younger, happier days. Solo, I think that duel with you must have restored my vigor. Next time, I get to duel you, okay? Alright, bye! I guess you're not gonna, like, get in trouble for this or anything because you're old and have a lot of money. Isn't that just how it be? I will make sure to store the keys someplace where no one can ever find them. Why didn't you do that in the first place? We're no longer in danger from the three sacred beasts. That's right. And the school's back to normal. I'm glad the threat is all over. I can finally relax. Except I have a stack of papers to grade. What a great final message to end the arc on. Kagamaru and the Shadow Riders are no more! We've got like five more events in the game to go, chat. But I'm pretty sure we still have to get more level ups. I really hope level 20 unlocks all of the story stuff. I don't want to have to level up past that in this playthrough. That'll get way too tedious. How do you get the sacred beasts to use them? You have to beat the main story and then in the post game, it's really, really dumb in this game. Uh, I think you could just get them from card packs in the 5Ds games. But, uh... You beat the main story, and after you beat the main story, it makes it where all of the duelists you've dueled throughout the game, even the story ones, like the Shadow Riders, can spawn randomly. And then Kagamaru specifically only shows up on the weekends, I think Saturday and Sunday, or it might just be Saturday. And then you have to beat Kagamaru, and every time you beat Kagamaru, he has a percentage chance of giving you one copy of one sacred beast. So it sucks. And by the time you actually get them, you will have played Spirit Caller so much, you won't want to play Spirit Caller anymore. Oh, time to go to school after I just saved the world from the superintendent. So, like, when he got the Sacred Beasts, he was like, WORLD DOMINATION! But, like, at the same time, he was also like, oh yeah, I just wanted to, like, be young again. Time to start class, children. But before I get to that, Industrial Illusions held a worldwide card design competition. Oh, we're doing this immediately? Like Chumley is leaving? And this time, the winner came from Duel Academy. Wow, sweet! Who? Who? We all know it's not you, Jaden. What did you say, Cyrus? Your picture was just a drawing of your favorite monster. Jaden won a contest for drawing Neospatians when he was a child, and Kaiba Corp sent them into space! What do you mean, oh, we know it wasn't you, Jaden? Shut your dirty mouth, Cyrus. You suck. Yeah, but I've seen preschoolers draw better pictures than yours. You're a pathetic loser. Silence! I will now announce the winner, Chumley Huffington. Awesome, Chumley. Aw, shucks. Congratulations. Chumley, please go to Chancellor Shepard's office immediately after class. Now let's begin our lesson. Open your books. We have books.
need myself a drink of water. We can uh, we can probably get this Chumley event done before stream is over. Isn't Jaden the reason why Dandelion is a card in the anime? Yeah, I think he drew the Neospatians and also Dandelion. I thought we'd get a new card pack after beating What's-His-Face, but I guess not. Uh, we're really close to the end of the game now. There's no way that we, like, hard change our deck at this point. So the only thing I would want to buy is when Wednesday comes around, try to get... Try to buy Reboot Electronics to get enough copies and try to get another Reflect Bounder from Messenger from the Sky to try to get, um... Shining Angel and Reflect Bounder and then pivot to a light deck. But other than pivoting this deck to being more light focused instead of more machine focused, we're we're not changing the deck anymore in this playthrough. I'm really looking forward to the 5Ds games. I don't know about Stardust Accelerator. I assume it's the same for it. But I know in Reverse of Arcadia and Over the Nexus, it is so much easier to get card packs and to get different ones. Oh, we can duel Chaz randomly now. I may have lost last time, but I won't this time. You're going down. Alexis is mine. No, I called dibs. You better not be... Okay, good. You're using an arm dragon deck. What was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. <laughs>